All right. We're alive. Wonderful. I'm sure everyone will appreciate this. I see familiar names in chat. I was watching this off because I'm not going to do this the, the speed run. I want to kill the rat by stomping on it. But <laughs> that's it. Anyway, so this is Mousetrap Hotel. Uh, Junkyard Dave bought this for me off eBay for $3. Uh, the music is fantastic. The green is eye burning. Uh, it's Ghost Kubo's favorite game. Uh, he actually has held it in his hands before. Uh, he cursed at me about it for a while. But otherwise, it's actually a very technical game, and I'll actually have to explain a lot. And the only thing I wanted to kind of show off... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just want to show off the one demo thing here, is the game introduces how you play the game, and it constantly kills the main character, like, repeatedly. There's four different variations of it dying. And... It's, uh, yeah. I'm good to go whenever. Uh, you good, good to start the timer, Stair? I'm ready whenever you are. All right. Let's let this mouse die, because I have to actually start it from the screen. Oh, yeah, that's the hotel. I'm not going to be able to show that in the run as well, so it's five floors. And it, his neck is broken. All right, three, two, one, go. So this is a wonderful game that everyone should play. Uh, if anyone actually were to even complete it and submit to the leaderboard, you get second place. I'm currently the only runner in the world who is stupid enough to run this game. Uh, this is a simple platformer. Uh, the, it does not control as bad as it looks. Uh, the momentum in your air is actually where the problems are. I'm actually going to grab this cookie for safety. And basically, this uh, part of the hotel I'm in right now is the basement and there's a bunch of washing machines and apparently bubbles can kill rats or mice i guess in this case this is mouse trap hotel this is based off uh mouse trap uh the board game very loosely i'm actually gonna quickly grab this cookie as well i'm stuck on these bubbles i have to actually get a really high buffer of hp you can see on the top there i have two cookies I technically have four life, because my tail grows for the first two of them, and then after that I have uh, a cookie counter, I guess, for life. The hitboxes are actually quite generous in this game, uh, in good and bad. I've been smacked numerous times when I shouldn't have, and then other times I've gotten away with uh, not taking damage. And I'll be taking the first part of this game slow. I was actually doing runs yesterday in preparation for, well, now. And basically what it boiled down to is I was doing too many risky strats, so I found a couple safe strats to do so I can... Okay, I have to wait for a second for Bumble Boy. Uh, please grab this cookie. There we go. And I need at least seven cookies to guarantee what I want to do, and I will be taking a slightly longer route. Uh, when I was doing 80% runs and I was like smashing my head up against the wall to try to get a decent run, there's two life already down. Uh, I love bubbles. Bubbles are... And I fell into a washing machine. That's great! So now I lost all my power-ups. And this is why I need a health buffer. So all I have to do is get to the end of the basement, and I'll be fine. I'm actually getting this part a little bit slow now. As I get hit, I lost my last power-up. So now any bubble will kill me. So I'll grab a cookie here, and you have to hold up on the pipe in order to not break your neck as you fall. Uh, it's a mechanic they do not teach you, uh, and they do not show, and all it does is just you fall and die. So I'm almost out of the first part of the stage. And honestly, the basement and the first floor are the most scary. Uh, after that, uh, the color green will just kill you after a while, too. But this game is actually pretty... Consistent. There goes my buffer of health there. This game was made by people. People got paid to do this, so... I'm just surprised that... Uh, I'm actually gonna grab this cookie for safety, actually. I don't normally grab that one, but... So we have a beautiful... Oh, and I missed that jump. Okay, I didn't get hit, though. I, I want that cookie, but I can't get that cookie. Uh, you'll be hearing the word cookie a lot throughout this run because there's uh, a couple power-ups 
uh, or powers, pickups. Uh, there's cookies, which increase your health and increase your tail. Uh, there is cheese, which will give you lives. Thus, uh, the counter up there that says maxis, because there are plural of max. So therefore, there are maxis. It's uh, eloquent, to say the least. And this is the part where I actually have to sit here and wait, because I had to wait for this ant to hit the switch, or else I will walk into that anvil and die. Because they have anvils in the basement, the size of ants that can kill mice, which are half the size of an ant. Then I got my input eaten there, so this is actually kind of annoying. And I will say as well, as defense, I have to wait one extra cycle here. Uh, in my defense for this game, uh, this actually is a very difficult game. But it's a very well-polished shovelware game. I've played far worse platformers, like Rugrats the movie, the game, for the Game Boy. And uh, that itself... Actually, I gave it to Spike Vegeta, so if he ever does play it someday, you can blame me for that. So we're going to keep moving forward. This is the last little bit, and then we're going to go in the elevator, and we're going to do the safety strap. So we're going to jump, and we're going to hit this elevator, mash A, but not completely, because we have to go to the fourth floor, because now I have 55 seconds to kill. And this is the most intimidating elevator music ever in games. And when I first played this, I thought this was some sort of thing you're supposed to avoid. Uh, these weird triangles apparently are something. I don't know what they are. We get cheese, and then we also get cookies here. And the cookies drop every roughly 6 seconds. We have 55 seconds, and we can get a good buffer of health doing this. This is the safety strat. And I have to do a lot of damage boosting throughout this game. And if you die, you lose, I think, 3 cookies plus whatever you got hit. Or three life. Whatever comes first. But I'm never gonna run out of lives, but if I were to run out of cookies, I am in. Uh, uh, my gameplay will crumble. I'll say that. I, I know somewhere Stinger is cringing at that. I so. hate you. I know! <laughs> it's fine. So now I can just hold right here. Boo <laughs> this man! Yes, yes, yes. So these are little tiny robots. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you normally see in hotels here, like over at Arbor's Lair Break, I'm sure a lot of people realize that you see tiny little robots on the floor. And mouses and everything like that, too. So now there's laser grids inside this, uh, this vent, and we have to collect a bunch of keys. And there's bombs, don't worry about the bombs, they explode. Uh, they're mouse-sized bombs to kill mouse. Sure, why not? And then we're gonna go over here and grab this key. We're gonna grab this key, hit the hit the anvil. Thank you. And then the cat paw, which came in, that was clearly a cat, if you thought otherwise. Shame on you. Uh <laughs> it is uh, a huge waste of time if you don't hit it with the anvil. Because otherwise you have to hit it with your tail 20 times. It is extremely annoying. So I actually got enough little speed boost, and I'll explain how I'm doing that in a sec. No, you can't get a cat, uh, cookie. So I'm going to be damage boosting through a lot of stuff here. And you can see my cookie did not get decreased when I got hit. That's because it kind of overflows. I have more cookies than it can count. Now I finally have one less than that. I skipped that first vent because that first vent actually is a troll vent and it leads you to basically a place that you have to exit out of anyway. So we're just going to quickly kill these small little robots, because Mousetrap Hotel. I actually hit the switch there. And we're going to go into this little thing here. We're going to go into the very far right of it, jump, and then we should be able to... There we go. We've got the cat paw at the same time as the key. And now we're going to head left. And if you jump, you actually move faster than the screen can transition, so you can kind of get out of the center part. So... I don't intend to get stomped, which is why I showed it off at the beginning. Uh, getting stomped is very sad, because it puts you back very far for some reason, compared to other deaths. So we're going to be going through this wonderful vent again, and... Okay, didn't get hit there. That's nice, at least. So, you can obviously see that this game was made with the color green in mind. Uh, it gets nauseating after a while to play. Uh, not gonna lie. And this is a very weird puzzle room, uh, full of bed bugs, for the record. So this hotel has a lot of issues. 
And this is the door we want here, because this one has the key in it. And we have to wait for this cat paw to go one, two, retract, wait, jump over, hit it. He hit, technically hit me there as well, but I got the key and I got it out. <laughs> I used to work at hotels, I can confirm. There's a lot of situations where bombs and uh, robots roam the hallways. This mostly happens at nighttime when no one watches. So, and cookies everywhere, and also the mouse is technically a quarter size of the bed, but the bugs are like half the size of the mouse. So there's some serious issues going on here with scaling, but that's beside the point. So now we're finally done the second vent. We have two more vents in this uh, wonderful floor. I don't know what the story is to this game. Uh, so if someone in chat wants to make up a plot, they can. I just did a skip there. You can technically jump and hold up going into the vent. You're supposed to be exiting from at the end of the uh, segment. Technically, the vent I'm supposed to enter is actually one more further down, but since I don't want to take more damage, uh, I actually have to constantly uh, stop these robots. Please stop. Also, yeah, uh, the deaths are very violent in this game. It's, I think, Tomb Raider, but pixelated. Uh, if I get exploded, it looks like his neck is broken. Uh, if I get corkscrewed, it looks like his neck is broken. He gets burned. There's a lot of different ways of dying, truthfully. We don't want that vent. I almost went in there by accident out of habit. We actually want to go into here. I'll grab the cookie while I have a chance. Wait, wait, wait. And then we run forward, get the cat paw, and go over. So now we can... See, that's the vent I was supposed to exit from. So now that would be the vent I'd have to enter from. And then this next one coming up will be the final vent. And hopefully I don't get too much damage here. I want to have a nice buffer. Okay, cool. So now we actually can leave. Once you hear this music, it kind of means you're kind of good to go. But at the same time, not really, because then we have like two tracks in this game. So it's kind of based on what they actually can do. But basically, as long as the screen is scrolling, so if you jump and get a little bit of extra speed like what I'm doing here, uh, you can see that the... Oh, these little robots are annoying as heck. There we go. They spawn and they take a lot of hits. There you go. Unfortunately, they don't actually spawn at certain parts of the, the screen. They actually spawn at certain uh, segments of time since they appear. There you go. If I have a new strat, I found out just when I was practicing before this, if you hit them, they actually stay at your pace. So... I can actually kind of boost away from them. I actually have to kill them though, because I'm pretty sure I had to elevate and open up those enemies around. So there's mash A here, because I'm going to go down to floor 1 now, because that's actually the most difficult floor. And you can see the timer on the top has now 45 seconds, because we're not going up as many floors. And if you were to go from the basement to the first floor, you only have 25 seconds, and you can get four cookies in that time during the elevator trips. So you don't have too much of a damage boost, and the risk your strat is going from the basement to floor one to floor two, so far all the way up the hotel. The safety strat is going up from basement to floor four, and then going back to floor one, doing two, three, and then going up to the top floor. Which has ghosts. We'll get to those eventually as well, because that makes sense. But this is a very weird... Uh, once I get the next cookie, I definitely don't have to grab any more stuff. It's, it's not going to appear in time. Thank you for the good luck. At least someone's wishing me good luck. I'm not used to that in games I run. So we are going to... Nope, I don't like that. There's a very weird interval. For when you can actually get by these people who have the world's longest legs. Uh, for some reason, the table, uh, the the bed is only uh, like four times the height of Max, but for some reason they tower like the friendly giant. I don't quite understand as well. I'm gonna wait a sec because I actually would have died there. And now we're gonna be really horrible people, and we're gonna shove the thumbtack beneath these people who are stomping, and they're gonna have their foot up so we can get by them. I got no defense, that's a horrible thing to do to people. So, Max is a horrible person. Horrible mouse, even. So we're just gonna dodge all these 
things by damage boosting for the most part. I shove this thumbtack beneath this guy's foot again. Of course they're dressed in green, because there's no other color in the world other than green in this, this universe. Uh, what's falling? I do believe, actually, it is those things you put receipts on, those little needles and weights. There's a lot of them. That's the closest thing I could think of that would be in a hotel that looks like little hammers upside down. This jump will probably get... Okay, I actually managed to have my input not be eaten there. And a lot of people might be thinking, like, wow, you didn't damage boost too many times during this game so far. Why do you have so much health? And the answer is coming up when I get to the end of this area. Uh, for some reason, this is level one. Like, this is the lobby. And this is, like, if you're to mash A, you go automatically here in the elevator. Also, there's uh, abyss pits and everything like that in lobbies, like, like the normal is. So we have to hit this trap, grab the cheese, and now we go backwards. And now there's sprinklers. Those are sprinklers, they're not aliens, don't worry. Uh, oh, I missed that cookie. Oh, whatever. There's a lot of cookies coming up here. But the thing is, I don't want to stop. So I'm going to move as fast as I can, use the tail to flicker uh, and get slowed down just a little bit. But every single one of these little white balls that come down can do damage. And after a while, it adds up. And during... Yep, yeah, thank you, little robots. I was going to say, if I'm very unlucky, which I'll take two hits there, grab a cookie though. Uh, the da amount of damage boosting I actually need to do is disgustingly large compared to other games that I see run. Because, at least with damage boosting, when you die, you get your health back, and when you die, you actually lose health, you don't get it back. That uh, darn it. Get rid of those guys there. A little bit too much damage from my life here. Uh, but we're just going to take this part safe, because I don't want to have just four, because there's still a lot more coming. Uh... There's no good reason to ever compliment the music in this game, so I don't know who's posting that. There we go, grab two cookies, which is a lot harder to do than it looks, because you can't stand on top of the sprinklers when they're, I guess, sprinkling. Um, I think that's the right verb for it, I don't know. Whatever you want to grab that. Okay, I, apparently his nose was just in the right place, and I still got hit. I don't really agree with that hitbox, but whatever the game says otherwise. And I barely got through that one as well. And we're finally at the end of floor one, which is why you need all those damage boosting cookies. Because otherwise, this is... No, there's no iframes. Uh, you actually get locked into place and you'll get hit. So, I'll do this elevator again, so if you want to do anything, Stinger, feel free to. Alright, we do actually have a donation. From Ghost Kumo for ten dollars. He says, "Here's ten dollars to put towards changing to a better game." If that's not allowed, Shawnee has to put on mittens after the run. He'll know what that uh. means. <laughs> uh, so we bad. love Robo battles. We do. So we're on to the next floor. This is technically floor three. There's more bed bugs. Like a ton more bed bugs. But there's actually no really intensive damage boost anymore because they don't come down by a time. Like, here I'll take a damage boost and then flick with the tail and one more damage boost and I get a cookie. So, like, it's really not that bad. But compared to Flora 1, it's... You want to move as fast as possible, as quick as possible. But the next two floors are relatively simple. This is kind of annoying because these ants will come in from the side of the screen. Uh... They're kind of getting farther and farther apart, it's kind of harder to avoid them. And there's, they, they're semi-patterned, but at the same time, there really isn't. Like, they seem to be based on actually where the screen is scrolling from. So this is another instance where they have to tell you to climb up the pipe. Oh, I actually didn't get hit there, I actually got to keep a cookie, that's nice. So you have to hold up, I'm actually going to hold up and go through the door. And hopefully I get the most difficult jump in the game. Cool. Thank you, I didn't mean to duck there. There's a ducking animation. It's great. It's super useful as well. It doesn't stop all your movement at once. But this jump here, thank you. Okay, good. I am happy because I don't have to go to that bottom part. Uh, that jump is extremely tight for what it looks like because the jumping is just wrong in this game for how it starts up. 
Like, I was just holding left there, actually, when I jumped off the, the bed, and you can clearly see that there is, uh... Like, he stops him in momentum. But there's more laser grids! So now we have to do more laser grids and take more damage, because I actually don't know how to dodge these things, other than hopefully they flicker when Maxi, being very slow, isn't in there. There's a trap without cheese. So yeah, we have basically... Well, there you go. A little bit of luck when it comes to that, but we can't do too much. And we have to wait for the uh, the springs on the beds are A, sentient, apparently, which I don't agree with at all. And uh, if they're going down, they're dangerous. If they're going up, they're harmless. Uh, you can actually even jump up into them as you're going up, and you actually will take damage. So here's the other part of the damage boost I want to do. So one there, I will actually not take two there, because I actually want to have a little bit more for the next floor. This one I'll take a damage boost for. And there's another pipe, so if you didn't learn the mechanic twice over... And also there's a hole beneath it, because they're idiots. But this music is back on, so that means we're doing good. And if you want to read anything, or say anything, or plug anything, feel free to, because it's just a slow walk back, basically, with all the stuff that's going to be happening. Stinger? Oh god, I think I killed him through gameplay. Uh, it It's pretty hard to watch. It is! It's even worse to practice! Also, the, the, I hate this color green now. And, and the floor. And... That's, I wouldn't really call that green. I wouldn't either. I don't it's know what really to call it. It's kind of offensive to call it green, because green is such a good color. But this is not green. No, it's something different. It's a four-person working on a Game Boy game for Money Green. Oh, it's a color of greed! There you go. This is an actual version of greed. So we have one more elevator trip. Actually two more, but one more for the main floors. We're now going to floor three. Because the color of shovelware, yep. So, once again, now we're to a 25 second elevator, so we can get four cookies. But thankfully the next floor actually isn't that bad, and I actually have a good buffer of cookies. But what's my time right anyway? Oh, we're just past 21 minutes. Okay, that's pretty good then. That's a moth. I hate moths. They're the only things that move diagonally in the game, and they did not really make them... Uh, well... Oh, so everything's been giving me intervals of 100 or 1,000 points. If I kill that moth, I'll get 999. I don't get it. It's really annoying. It makes things unbalanced. Grab a cookie... There's that hand. Oh, so fire. My splits actually is a picture of uh, Maxi dying in a fire for this game, and the only split is his please end. I just burn that cheese to death. So we're gonna have to actually sit here and wait in a sec. I'm curious what people will say as well. We have salt, we have F, I don't know what F is, unmarked um, container, and M, and K. So those are spices. We're in a kitchen. We're actually on top of a shelf, which is connected apparently to all the stoves in the world. Please go away. Stupid little. And we have to wait for a sec here. And there's a rolling pin. Now that the rolling pin's gone by, we actually can... Uh... Hey, Team Moth. Those are very small rolling pins. They are, Yeah, oh, okay, good. Also, the game's gonna freeze for a second, because I actually went too fast. And we have an auto-scroller. So, yeah. Have is... a donation here uh, it's from Tiny Tim. He donates five dollars and says, "Hey y'all, had to donate for Shawnee and this quote-unquote game." <laughs> Good luck on the run. Cheers. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim.
Yeah, the, the fact I can even play this game for anyone, let alone more than two people normally on my stream, is quite phenomenal. So that's the auto scroller. Now there's an the, uh, immense amount of utensils going to be falling from the sky. Uh, for whatever reason, this is annoying, and I dislike it. But whatever. And there's an ant, and I should jump here. Yeah, I can dodge that one, and there's a second one, whatever. I don't really care about taking too much damage here, because once the cookie comes up in the next one... Yeah, I'll wait for a second. It's too far over on the side of the screen, and it's actually really annoying to actually dodge as many things as possible, because you don't really have much indication. Let's wait for a sec here again. So, the spoons fall slightly slower than forks, so if someone who understands physics can explain to me why that is, I'll be very happy. Because theoretically they should just fall to the ground, but I guess aerodynamics? I don't know, something. <laughs> this game isn't actually that bad. Also, those little... I don't know what the hell to call those things on the ground? They're the only thing in the game that you actually can kill by jumping on. The way moth. So we're going on to the last floor. Excuse me. Much tea. Okay, the moth didn't follow me, that's nice. So we got one last, this is gonna be a 35 second elevator ride. This is going to be the final floor, and then I have to actually be very, very focused for the last part of the run, because if I miss a door, uh, it will actually extend it by like two or three minutes worth of gameplay. It's actually really bad. Uh, I'll read it out in a sec when I have a sec, so I've got to get the cookies. But there actually is a very weird maze-like thing when they go up the final chimney, going up to the last place. And for whatever reason, the combination is 322222223221122211122. And then when I have doors, you actually have to go in and out of. So you have to make sure you go in the right ones, because if you go in the opposite one or a wrong one, uh, you will actually be locked out of where you currently are. You have to find your way back and then figure out where you are in the map, and then you have to progress like normal. And when I was doing a practice run earlier, I missed it, and I went from being a minute and a half ahead of my time, free cookie for the record, I can jump on this guy's shoe, to losing my run by a minute 41. So it is extremely excruciating. And there's ghosts, don't worry about the ghosts. They're in most hotels, so you just don't realize it. But for whatever reason, they have um, an extremely hard puzzle section at the end, which is unlike anything else in the game. And it's 17 doors that you have to choose right. There we go. Oh. No time loss there because that guy's a bad dancer. Because he's wearing green, so you can tell. Another free cookie because I still have to wait for the cycles for the, the dancers. So now I actually have to focus. So that one. If you want to try to figure out what the top says, by all means. Alright. Yeah, it does look very difficult right now, but they do split up. And then we have to skip this one. Grab a key. We go backwards now. We jump once so we can get beneath these ants before they descend. This one, and that one, I think it was the upper bottle, whatever. And time's coming up. And time. 27.49. Yeah, okay. So that is, uh... Mousetrap Hotel in all its glory. I hate it. <laughs> I hate that I can play it. It's not a good game. Everyone is lying <laughs> in chat. It's but a this fantastic is... game. Yeah. Yes, you can absolutely ban David. I have no problem with that. Um, ban him twice if you can, even. 
But this is uh, actually I can show the map here now. Uh, the cheese on the side is it shows which floors and how many floors are. The basement is obviously with washers. There's a lobby. There's two sets of bedrooms apart, and there's a dining room area and the dishwashers and stuff like that on the, the third floor. And then on top of all the rooms, they have a dance hall. So this is a poorly, poorly designed hotel full of bed bugs, bombs, mice, laser grid vents. Uh, yes, I did get a world record. Technically yesterday, Horza. Uh, it's 2630. Well, whatever I donated initially for the, the marathon. So it was like 2637 or something. Yeah. And it was, uh, I did the risky strats by going up the elevator properly. And that's what saved me about a minute worth of time. Although I don't think I died, minus the washing machine at the start. So that's still pretty good. But what was the, t the time? It was 2749. 2749, all right. I'll, I'll donate that once I'm done, just because, again, some good should come from Mousetrap Hotel. So I'll chuck that and... Oh, well, you shouldn't have abandoned him. <laughs> it's good that we were able to inflict this on a bunch of other people. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. This the the fact that more than two people. Uh, there is no Discord. There is no plugs for how to run this game. I am the only runner. If you want to actually run this game, uh, I can send you a, a scan of my paper notes that I use. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bad game. But the next game is actually fantastically fun. I, I love watching the... Next game is an experience. Uh, it is an experience. Just the first minute and a half is so amazing. And um, I wish the best for that uh, for the upcoming runner. Uh, two meters is so fun. I think I'm done. So... Uh -huh. There's a, a, a constant war going on outside. There's no fireworks. They're actually dying. So. Well, thank you for doing Mousetrap Hotel. Next up, so no we ever. have the legendary Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to go set that up, and we'll be right back. Bye.